Howdy, 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 and welcome to the Lady Walker Show. We have a gym dandy of a show in store for you. You all, I got to tell you, in doing this show, I meet a lot of interesting people. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and my guest tonight, who I am interviewing indirectly, is someone of interest, y'all. He is an entrepreneur, a vocalist, international recording artist. He's a, he's, he's a songwriter. And he has done many other things, and he is going to be sharing that with you. So, beloved, welcome to the Lady Walker Show. In other words, put your hands together. And welcome to the Lady Walker Show, K.D. Brogia. K.D. Brogia. Hello, everyone. My name is K.D. Brogia. I'm an international recording star from Florence, Mississippi and uh, a graduate of Tougaloo College, and uh, thank you all for having me here today. Um, basically, I am a child prodigy, now professional vocalist. Uh, as a child prodigy, uh, that basically means it's a kid who has the abilities that uh, are at a higher level than uh, other kids in his or her age bracket, and um, that's what I was. I started out singing when I was three years old, started recording at four, uh, I started singing with a, a male chorus in our community uh, of Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem community. And basically how I was founded as a vocalist, I uh, was singing, my dad tells the story all the time. He was in a car, we were driving somewhere and he had me on the back seat and uh, he was playing, I think the gospel Southern airs or I, I forget, the Canton spirituals, but it was a gospel group, quartet group. And uh, he, would, he could hear a voice on top of the higher voice singing in harmony and uh, he would turn the radio down and he still could hear the voice and he happened to look up in the rear view mirror and lo and behold my mouth was moving and that was my voice <laughs> so pretty much uh, i was deemed a vocalist from day one from birth so that's how i was founded as a child prodigy uh, as a child prodigy it was uh, really unique in my community because in our community uh, we're known as singers, especially my family. We're known as a family of singers. So I wasn't really treated special in regards to my ability, but everyone knew it, that I, I had an anointing on my voice and that uh, my vocal abilities were definitely, definitely surpassed any of the kids in my, my age range or a lot of the people in our community as far as singing. So that's how it went. Uh, not only am I an international recording artist, I am also an entrepreneur, and my entrepreneurialships uh, consist of uh, an AP, a apiarist, uh, beekeeping, which is beekeeping. Uh, I also uh, am the creator and co-author of the Mississippi Musicians Day Bill, which was passed in 2013. And uh, I also go around and help uh, create tribute bands and different bands to help commemorate uh, festivications. So that's pretty much what I do on, on a day-to-day -day basis. I travel a lot and I love traveling. I travel uh, approximately about six months out of the year uh, on an average. It, it could be more, uh, most of the times not less. <laughs> so I enjoy doing that um, a lot. I travel to places like Dubai and Kuwait, uh, a lot of the United Emirates, um, Japan, Abu Dhabi. So I, I stay on the go a lot. So now that we're through with the introductions, I'd like to really tell you about myself and who I am. My stage name is K.D. Brosia, but my government name is Kobia Singleton. And a lot of you are probably wondering how I got here or who I am or what makes me so special. Well, honestly, there isn't anything that makes me any more special than any other vocalist. But I think and I believe within myself what helps to set me apart and what allows me to do a lot of the things that I've done has to do with number one my dedication and the fact that I believe and lastly accountability now when you say dedication and believability and accountability and I'm going to explain further I believe that I was put on earth to do something and in doing that I had to search and I had to go through a lot of trials and errors in order to get where I am today and I'm sure that I have a lot more that I'll have to go through but where it basically started um, 
In my younger career, I did a lot of things um, that normal children do. I played and I worked, but I came from a, 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 a community where we believed and based ourselves on helping each other. So a lot of the things that I did outside of singing were I farmed, uh, did hay, we cut hay, we had cows, we uh, fixed fence, we cut firewood. So I'm a country boy. So uh, I'm not any different from any most other people in Mississippi or most other people that grow up on a farm. However, my father always encouraged us to do what we wanted to do. He encouraged us to always uh, give reverence, give reverence to a higher being, uh, and that higher being, is, I recognize him as Jesus. Um, and you know, different people call the higher deities different things, and I don't even want to get into that, but that was the first thing that he required. The second thing that he required is that we always stay true to ourselves. And in staying true to myself, I knew that I had a different gift and a different ability than people around me. So I started learning to cultivate that ability, first through band. In band, I played drums, and that's where I think I got a lot of my rhythm, rhythmic, um, a rhythmic verse from, as far as writing or how I comprise my melody lines in my writing, which is something that I'll get into later. Um, but because of my music ability as a drummer, I was able to read music and play music and get familiar with different notes and staffs and graphs and, and I took it from that point in studying jazz and then went from jazz to um, R&B and people like Take Six and Al Jarreau and I actually studied these people. But before I actually got to the Al Jarreaus or the Take Sixes, I developed a fascination for musicians, uh, Miles Davis, John Coltrane. And I would go around the house and I'd be ah, doodling on my voice. And my dad would always say, would you please stop with all that noise? So uh, <laughs> what, it was, what it actually happened is he challenged me to take the noises or the sounds that I heard from the trumpet and saxophone and actually start making melodies, act, put words to those, to those tones. So through taking those tones, I was able to take a, a, a line, a basic jazz riff that you would hear from a trumpet play and, or a saxophone, saxophonist play, I would actually vocalize it. So through doing that, I actually took my vocal doodling and helped, it helped to develop uh, my whole sense of creating melodies because that's what horn lines do. They, they play melodies. Um, and once they establish a melody, then when it gets to their form of a, a verse, you know, they go off and they, they do whatever they need to do. So um, that's, that's where my music ability actually developed from, uh, listening to different artists. And I, I, I didn't put it in just one genre. I listened to jazz. I listened to classical. Uh, I, I listened to R&B. I listened to gospel. I listened to uh, country. Uh, I mean, I... I I, I listen to some of everybody, uh, Kathy Mattia, I listen to Kenny Rogers, I, I mean, I, I love them all, Willie Nelson, I, I never stopped, and uh, Conway Twitty. So from those artists, I was able to get a, a really good feel, a good sense of who I was as an artist. So once I developed myself and understood what I wanted to do, then I, uh, I started to line myself up in a way that I would be able to perform with artists like uh, Mint Condition, uh, Stokely from Mint Condition. I actually, on my album, uh, my latest album that I have, um, which is entitled Love Is, I actually performed songs with Mint Condition and recorded songs with Mint Condition. I've been on tour with artists uh, like Loose Ends. Uh, I've opened up and performed with artists like Fantasia, Jaheem, Wanye uh, uh, from Boys to Men. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And, and, you know, I, I want to go into that but later, but I, I really want to encourage uh, people to find themselves in music. I think that that's one of the biggest problems that uh, a lot of musicians have, a lot of artists have today. They don't actually find themselves in, in, it, in what they're doing. And uh, they're so busy wanting to be discovered or wanting to be found that they lose the true musicology. They lose the true essence of who they are attempting to be liked by many. And uh, I know I'm going back to it, a lot of you probably still don't know who I am. So all I can say is if you really want to know who I am, continue to listen to this program, first of all. <laughs> and second of all, Google my name, K. 
D. Brosia, and you'll definitely find out who I am. Welcome back, beloved. Didn't I tell you that he is certainly a person of interest? Exactly. I tell you what, he has really interests me. Hearing this young man and all the things he has accomplished thus far is worth me sharing him with you. So once again, here is KD Brogia. So in my development as a kid, uh, I always prayed for wisdom. I wanted to be like King Solomon. I always prayed. I wanted. I didn't want to be rich. I don't need to be famous. I, I just want to be. I want to be wise because if I'm wise, then I can be rich and I can find out how to be famous. So in that development, I always prayed for wisdom. And in my wisdom, uh, one day my dad came to me and he said, you know, son, listen, you, 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 you got to make a choice. Uh, you know, you can't be in the club on Saturday night and, and in the pool pit on, on Sunday morning. So you got to make a choice. And uh, in my choice, I decided to quit my, my job. Uh, I used to work with the Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics as an under, undercover narcotics agent. And, uh, I decided I was gonna let it all go. I mean, the 401k, the benefits, the cars, the, the clothing allowance, the, the travel in and out of state, I decided I was gonna let it go. Uh, I packed up my bags, I moved to Atlanta, and uh, while I was in Atlanta, I was approached with an opportunity to go to Japan as a vocalist. So I, I thought about it and contemplated and decided, you know what, I'm gonna do it. Well, lo and behold, uh, a few weeks uh, before we were to go, I, I was informed that the, the person who organized the band didn't uh, want to go. She wasn't chosen. They liked everybody in the package that we put together except for her. And uh, because she was so upset, she just was going to X the entire band. But at this point, I had sold all, everything I had, the refrigerator, the I mean, let the apartment go to 30 days notice. I mean, I, I sold it all. I gotten rid of everything. So I was determined that I was going to go regardless. And to make a long story short, I went ahead and I, I went to Japan, not knowing anybody there, not speaking any type of language. And while I was on the train from the airport to into Tokyo, uh, I met an African-American vocalist there who I told, he saw me with all my luggage and was like, man, where are you going? I told him where I wanted to go. He's like, well, that's where I'm going, follow me. And I followed him to this place. I auditioned, I got a job, and that was basically my infiltration into Japan. Uh, later, I, I ended up living in Japan for a total of five years, and uh, I did everything under the sun. Uh, I did modeling, I had clothing sponsors, belt buckle sponsors, I drove a motorcycle, I had a, a car, uh, I, I really lived the life. I did voiceover work. I wrote, wrote and performed for various commercials like Honda, Pepsi, um, Sapporo Beer. I mean, I, I did it all. I, I loved it. It was great. But at some point, I realized that I had reached the ceiling uh, in Japan. I knew that I, because I could speak the language, I, I started understanding the culture more. And I realized that I wasn't gonna ever be any better than what the highest, than what they allowed me to be in Japan. And I was never gonna be any, any better in their eyes than a Japanese person. I mean, I'm a foreigner in, in a foreign land. How could I be bigger and better than a Japanese person? Um, so once I started to realize that I was gonna always be capped on how far I could grow in Japan, I decided to come back home. Uh, but before I left Japan, I actually, uh, I released a CD in Japan. And in Japan, I'm recognized as uh, the first foreign J Neo Soul artist. Uh, that was back when Neo Soul was uh, taking its surgeons and you know, sweeping across the land. And uh, I actually did a CD, or wrote, wrote and performed a CD in Japanese and English. Uh, the name of the CD is called Boku Des, and uh, it's no longer in production, but I, I, to this date, that was one of the, the, the most monumental projects I think that I've ever worked on. Um, so I met my manager in Japan. Uh, she's American. Her name is Robbie Danzi, and the name of her company is Prodigy International. And uh, she said, you know, you've got, you've got that it factor, man. You, you really should go back to the States. You, you, it's time for you to leave here. So with her help, uh, I was able to come back to uh, America, I planted in LA and, and got started. And that's where I actually uh, created this CD. It's uh, once again entitled Love Is. 
And uh, I released this in 2008, and I know that that was quite a while ago, but we still pushed the CD because a lot of people have never heard it, and it has some really great cuts. And once again, I performed with artists, uh, Stokely from Mint Condition, and I uh, have writers like James Glasgow, and uh, I was able to, to work with uh, some great producers on this project. So if you get a chance, please go check it out uh, on cdbaby.com, it's on amazon.com, uh, iTunes, as far as I'm concerned, you can find me on any of my social media sites, MySpace, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Reverb Nation, <laughs> I forget, there's so many I forget them all. But, so I came back to America, recorded the CD, uh, that's when I started my touring with various artists. Um, I, I've been all over the world because of this project and because of my works with the producers that I've worked with. Uh, I'm currently, as I stated earlier, working on something in the state of Mississippi. So let me give you a kind of heads up of what happened from Los Angeles back to Mississippi. While I was in Los Angeles, I was able to perform at some of the world's renownedest places. But there was a problem. I still wasn't fulfilled. Um, I, I wasn't making headway like I wanted to. Uh, so I was a, a, a small fish in a really big pond, and I wanted to be a bigger fish in a bigger pond. So I decided how could I make a better impact on the world? And in, in my thinking, I decided why not go back home and start there? So I moved back to Mississippi and uh, in moving back to Mississippi, I started thinking, okay, so what can I do to impact my community? What can I do to help my community? What can I do to help my community that will in turn help the state? In doing that, the first thing that I did was, I was watching TV ironically and um, I saw something about bees come on TV, a bee special. So I started learning about bees. And in doing that, I started also thinking musically, what could I do to contribute to uh, help my community and my state? And that's where I came up with the idea of the Mississippi Musicians Day Bill. Basically what that bill does is help to recognize Mississippi artists who have made international uh, contributions all around the world musically. Uh, we've got people like, uh, Muddy Waters, we've got artists like B.B. King, we've got Elvis Presley, we've got uh, Johnny Taylor, we've got Dorothy Norwood, we've got Cassandra Wilson, we've got, uh, uh, I mean, K.D. Brozier, uh, we've got David Banner. There are so many, uh, uh, Tawana Shante, you've got th even independent artists, uh, Lori Walker, uh, I, I, the list could go on for days of artists, but those artists aren't being recognized uh, like I feel they need to be. If I go to Japan, anybody knows and everybody knows about these artists from Mississippi. Even in London, they teach univer in universities, schools about Delta Blues, about Mississippi Delta Blues. But I, I feel and I know that a lot of people even in the state of Mississippi we fail to appreciate our true worth as Mississippians and the true contributions that Mississippi, the state of Mississippi and its artists, Morgan Freeman, Oprah Winfrey, uh, the Mannings, that they actually have given to the world. People around the world watch these artists and these entertainers and yet we in the state of Mississippi, it's just like a common thing for us. So I decided why not write a bill that helps to recognize these artists and these entertainers and these people uh, at the level that they are, from the major level to the independent level. And that's where that bill came from. So back to the bees. In deciding how can I help my community, uh, I'm, I've taken on an approach in my latter years to help renew and rejuvenate my body by doing a lot of organic and natural things in my body, foods and, you know, stop taking the shelf products. And so in doing that, I figured out, well, honey is one of the most natural products that there are in the world. So I wanted to contribute to my community by becoming an, an apiarist, which is a beekeeper. So I'm actually a beekeeper. And uh, that's how I got into coming back to, back to Mississippi and con contributing to the state of Mississippi, as well as the community and the state. To obtain a copy of Love Is, 
by Katie Brosia, go to cdbaby.com or amazon.com or itunes.com or log on to www.kdbrosia.com and for booking call 562-234-4900 or email dancy at prodigymgt.com Keep your head up Hey, 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 welcome back, beloved. I am so glad that you all are still with us and enjoying this interview, indirect interview with KD. And once again, here is KD. So currently, uh, I've been working on how to downsize or put every, my life, uh, the 30 odd years of my life into uh, a way that people can, I can present it to people. So I'm actually working on books right now, writing a, a book uh, and I can tell you, I don't want to tell you the name of it, but I'll tell you what it's about. It's basically about the musical industry and uh, some of the ways that I feel that a lot of independent artists, a lot of artists have fallen by the wayside. We've lost our integrity if, as artists and I feel that uh, in losing our integrity, that is some of the thing that has helped uh, people not necessarily feel so positive about artists or especially independent artists. Um, when I came back to Mississippi, there was uh, one, one man, one artist who signed my name um, or signed his name on my career. And I always like to give reverence to this guy, uh, Dexter Allen. Thank you for, for the contributions that you, you did and the help that you gave me when I came back into Mississippi. He was the only person, the only artist that really uh, helped me and, and went out of his way to help get me gigs and get me acclimated uh, back into the state of Mississippi. So Dexter Allen, thank you. If you all don't know who Dexter Allen is, he is uh, one of the greatest guitarists, but not only guitarists, one of the greatest persons that I know in the state of Mississippi. It just so happens that he's a wonderful musician and a wonderful guitar player. But you all check him out. Uh, he does a, he's a blues artist. Uh, I, I, man, there's so many. We've got the Dexter Allen, you've got Mr. Sip, you've got Eddie Cotton. You all check these people out. They are here and we don't support them. Uh, we don't, I feel that we don't support them. And I've been to their shows and I see sometimes, man, we, we just don't support them like we need to. Um, but hey, that's, neat, that's neither here or there. Once the world recognizes how great they are, then, you know, I guess we'll be like the rest of the bandwagon folks. People in Mississippi will jump on board. So, hey, um, I want to tell you all about a little bit, a little more about me before I go. Uh, I also speak in different communities. I speak at Piney Woods and uh, I speak around the world, St. Louis, Los Angeles. I speak to our youth. Uh, prominently because I feel that that's where I can make the biggest contribution uh, in our society. Um, so I, I do a lot of speaking events and in my one speaking event there are three things that I always talk about and I want to leave these three basic laws of relationship. These are my laws. I created these laws or these principles of basic relationship, human relationship. The first law is do what makes you happy as long as it doesn't impede upon the rights of others. Meaning, and I don't condone this, but these are examples. If you like to drink and you want to drink till you get drunk, as long as you're doing it in the confines of your own home or a place that is representative and safe, please do it till you get drunk. Do it till you pass out. Great. But if you're going to drink at a bar or you're going to drink at a place and you know that you have to get home and you haven't taken care of the proper necessities or ways to get to, in, uh, to ensure that you safely arrive home, then don't do it. Do what makes you happy as long as it doesn't impede upon the rights of others. The second rule or the basic principle of laws of relationship, human relationship, recognize a person for how they are and handle them accordingly. I always tell the story. I, I have a brother, and God rest his soul, I love him to death. He's a kleptomaniac. He can't help it. It's in his nature. Does that mean that I don't love him? No. Does that mean that I don't invite him over for a Christmas or a holiday or birthday parties? No. That just means 
when I do invite him over, I know I got to hide all my stuff because he's prone to take things that I want or things that he, he feels are valuable or things that he wants. So recognize a person for how they are and handle them accordingly. If you know you got a best friend who can't keep a secret, don't tell him. <laughs> the third, and I think the hardest but most important rule, and please listen to me, this is the one, one thing that I found the hardest in all of my travels to Brown University and studying there in Providence, Rhode Island, to living in Israel for a year and studying at Hebrew University. The, the hardest thing that I found is I must, you must, we must take accountability for the things that go good as well as the things that go bad in our life, i.e. You win a million dollars, what's the first thing you say? Oh, thank God, I won a million dollars. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I won a million dollars. But somebody runs into the back of you, what's the first thing you say? What were you doing? They weren't paying attention. But what could you have done to help circumvent that accident? Could you have pulled up? Could you have blown your horn? Could you have been a little earlier? Could you have been a little later? We have to take accountability for the things that go good as well as the things that go bad in our life. If you follow these three laws of basic principles and basic principles of human rela relationships, I promise you, your day-to-day -day life is going to be so much more positive. And that's what we want. That's what I preach. That's what I teach, especially to our youth. We want to keep things positive. My name is Katie Brosia. I'm an international recording artist, but more importantly, I'm a Mississippian who cares about Mississippi. Thank you all for having me on the show. Thank you if you st stayed around and watched me to the end. I really appreciate you. I love you. Love is, love is what we need. To obtain a copy of Love Is by Katie Brosia, go to cdbaby.com or amazon.com or itunes.com or log on to www.kdbrosia.com and for booking call 562-234-4900 or email dancy at prodigymgt.com. Keep your head All right, beloved, there you have it. Yes, K.D. Brogia, a very interesting young, young man who is doing marvelous things around the world. An international recording artist. He's writing a book. He's an entrepreneur, songwriter, and a whole lot more, okay? He travels a lot. He is all the way from Florence, Mississippi. All right. Well, beloved, it has come to an end. I have to wrap it up. It has been real. And thanks to Trip for tuning in. And I, Lady Walker, yours truly, will see you next time on The Lady Walker Show. Ta-ta.